All right, folks, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios, and this tutorial comes to us from our class, Procreate, how to draw, sketch, and paint on your iPad. So if you like the class and you want a course that'll take you from zero to hero, go ahead and check out the link below for a special price for our YouTube family. All right, let's go ahead and get after it. All right, folks, welcome back to Procreate. So we're gonna show you a little bit on the basics of selection. Selection is one of the most difficult things you're going to do in digital art. It's something that a lot of people have problems with. So we're gonna show you how to do this easily. Now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna practice non-destructive. And so we're going to go ahead and select the current version of the rows and we're gonna duplicate it. And now with that selected, click off the X Come over to where it says version two, and let's call this version three. Okay, that way if we mess it up, we're good to go. And let's open version three. You see how I'm having you do things multiple times to make sure we get it all where we need it. Now, let's open the layers panel, and I wanna go ahead and I wanna start with the base color. And so, what we're going to ask Procreate to do is select base color. So to do that, let's go ahead and crank this up. Go to the N, right, to get the opacity, and bring this thing back to its full glory. Now we've got a bright red rose. And now we're going to come over to the selection tool. We're going to look at the four modes. You've got automatic, which is down here in the bottom of the screen. You got freehand, you got rectangular, and you've got ellipse. So now let's do automatic. I'm going to pick a rose petal on the right hand side of the image. Ooh, now why did it go ahead and do that, right? Because Procreate, when I chose automatic, said, give me all the reds. Now, why did it do that? Because Procreate doesn't understand that you wanted only one petal. So the best way to select something like this, I'm going to turn off the selection is to use what is called a freehand selection. Now watch this. I'm still on the base color, but I want to zoom in. And now, watch where my stylus goes. Notice that I begin to pull the marching ants over in the outline area. This is another reason why I love a solid black outline. Okay. And if you want to, you can stop the outline and you can start again. So you see that I'm able to pick up right where I left off. And now it's a solid outline. Now watch what happens. If I grab my brush, notice the piece that is not zebra striped. That's the power of a free hand selection. Now what can you do with this? Let's go ahead and say I wanted to turn that whole thing green. So I grab my brush, I grab a hard brush, and I want to turn the whole thing green. Notice that even though I made marks all over the page, only the green changed. Now if I don't want that, I do two fingers to undo, two fingers to undo. So if you only want to adjust part of the image, use selection, and my personal preference is freehand selection. Now, let's look at adjustments. Right next to the selection tab is the adjustments tab. I just clicked it open. And let's put an HSB adjustment on there. Now, if we go down to the bottom of the page, I can adjust the hue of this rose. So if I wanted to make it purple, I could make it purple. If I wanted to oversaturate, I could. If I wanted to undersaturate, I could. And if I wanted to crank up the brightness, I could. If I wanted to bring it down, I could. So this is key to making sure that you understand how Procreate works. You do not have to apply color or adjustment to the entire image or even the entire layer. You can only apply it to the areas which are selected. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit adjustments, and I'm going to use two fingers to bring that back. I don't want that. The reason I like the traditional rows to teach this is because there are a lot of small areas. So what I'd like you to do, 
pick another area. So let's pick another one. If I come into selection again, let's go ahead and select freehand. And now I grab the same area. Now watch this. This is really cool. I'll show you something new. Let's say that I want to isolate this pedal. I can hit save and load. And I just hit the little plus sign here. And now it has saved that selection. Now I'm going to show you something new. If you want to add to a selection, you can come over and you can just begin to draw on the page. You see how I'm now drawing the marching ants? And what am I doing? I'm going to add another pedal to that selection. Oh, now you see if I zoom in real good, you see I missed that? I can always come in and I can make another adjustment. So now I can add. Now look at what just happened. Where are the marching ants? The zebra stripes are down below these two petals. Now let's say I want to remove. I can always come in and let's say I want to remove part of this. I can come in here and you see where I'm drawing my circle? I can remove from the selection. And if I wanted to select everything but those petals, I could invert. Now you see where the zebra stripe is? If I come up and I try to draw, you'll notice nothing is on those petals. I use automatic selection sometimes. Most of the time I use freehand selection. And if you wanted to, you could do a rectangle selection. So I could select this, then I could select this, then I could select this. Sometimes it's appropriate to use a rectangle. I can tell you that I use freehand most of the time. So, and if you ever want to clear, you'll see the little brush down here, go to clear. So that's a little bit on the basics of selection. There are four modes, automatic, freehand, rectangular, and ellipse. And you can add to the selection or you can remove. You can invert it. You can copy paste. You can feather. And the coolest thing is, if I click save and I bring that selection back up, boom, it's right back to where I wanted it. All right, we're going to be using selection a lot. Selection and masking are the two things in Procreate and all digital art that most people have problems with. So if you're struggling right now with it, don't worry about it. We're going to give you a lot of opportunity to practice it coming up in our project. All right, we'll see you in the next one.